Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Well, Zillow did it again. It came out with a revised forecast. What's funny is the headlines that I'm seeing out there say Zillow is forecasting sales and prices 20% worse than Redfin. And you've heard me say before that a large percentage of a small number is still a small number, and you'll see that here. So uh, whatever grabs a headline, I guess. And, uh, you know, it really shouldn't be any surprise that Zillow is going to come in and revise things downward a little bit. Uh, they're one of the more bullish forecasters that are out there, and they tend to just about every year uh, miss the mark. Um, but again, I challenge you to find somebody that's gotten it right the past five years when it comes to real estate pricing forecasts. So I'm not about to try it, but here's what they said. It says here, their home value forecast was revised downward this month. Let me make this a little bit bigger here for you. And, uh, and then I'm going to turn my doggone phone off. Um, Zillow's home value forecast continued to project modest annual increases in the near term, calling for 0.4% growth over the entire year, 2024, down slightly from last month's prediction of 0.6. Oh, no. So over the next 12 months, Zillow expects home values to fall by 1.4%. That sounds about right to me. Um, and maybe it'll fall even further uh, just by the simple supply and demand and what we're seeing and we're seeing and i've got a report here from tom ruff from the mls and you can get that on my website rickhelps.com just go to the top it's right here and you will see right at the very tippy top there i'll pull my red pen download the may 2024 report and don't worry you will not be spammed you will you don't have to enter your email it's just there for you to go grab and look at. And I recommend it. It's got a lot of good stuff in there. It's kind of a combination between his personal data and assessment from the MLS, along with information from the Cromford Report. So please go to my website and download that report. Listings by day and by month, new listings that are coming on are up ever so slightly. This is kind of a busy chart, but basically it's showing you here's May of this year. Here's May of last year. May of last year, new listings were just barely coming on. It was terrible. It was 3,306. Now we're 3,649. Not a major chain change, but it is considerably lower than where it's been. So what the heck? I thought we were hearing that new listings were climbing through the roof and that uh, inventory is going nuts. Well, yeah, no. Um, inventory is climbing, and I'm going to pull it up here for you um, because – sales are down so much. So you can put a house on the market and if it stays on there and you add another, you know, thousand homes this month or 3000 homes, then uh, it's just going to continue to build. And this is what it looks like. You can see that we've kind of, we've kind of flatlined as far as active listings. And if I pull up my seven day moving average, which just, I add up new listings and back on market. That's what I call new listings. Then I add up anything that's gone under contract. So you can see that new listings have dropped and sales have dropped. And this is seasonal. Uh, but I also caution you when you use the word seasonal to say, well, yeah, but it was hot last year and we're slower than last year. Not alarming. Actually, it's kind of a record low. We haven't been this low uh, for years and years. And so the buyers are saying, I can't do it. I'm out, but yet sellers, you know, don't despair. Even that chart that I showed you right there, our ratio between contracts and listings is still 73% healthy enough for you to, to sell your home. Now contributions for sellers is still hanging around $9,000, but here's a more detailed list on what's going on with our listings here under contract listings pending. Current listings here show for the month of May, 7,791. Last month, 8,670, so it went down. Three months prior, it was 7,958. So it hasn't moved quite that much. Months of supply is kind of flatlining as well. New list prices, kind of flat as well. We went over that the other day. They have gone back down to the new list prices of what they were at the beginning of the year. Uh, the sales prices, average sales price, 592 one month prior. 602, three months prior, 570. 
days on the market here, it says the average days on the market is 66. Median is 46. That does not mean it takes you 66 days to get an offer on your house. It just means that's how long it's on the market. I mean, you can have it on the market today, get an offer tomorrow, and you're going to be on the market at least 30 to 40 days after that. Just the simple process of getting through all of the paperwork and the financing. So the average agent days on market is one that, that I like to follow. So, so don't be alarmed when you go, Oh my God, it's going to take me 90 days to get, find a buyer for my house. That's not what that means. Now in the editorial here, it says summers here are perfect. Weather's over. Everything slows down, especially the housing market. If you see someone rushing it's probably because they're in a hurry to get the hell out of Dodge. I couldn't agree more as Valley peeps head North to escape the heat our housing market trends south. Now, that happens every summer. It just so happens that we're being even slower this summer than we were last summer. It's no secret that our just completed home buying selling season did not perform as well as we had hoped, nor did it perform as well as it typically does. You may remember all the optimism in January. Rates are going to go down. They may go down to 5.5%. We even interviewed a guy on our channel here last summer uh, that was predicting uh, you know, Barry B predicting we're going to be in the mid fives and real estate's going to go crazy. But there were some unforeseen circumstances, changes that came that went on. Inflation was far higher than what he was predicting. 5.5 never showed up, but we still had a lot of optimistic agents out here in January. We're going to have four to six rate cuts. It's going to go nuts. If you don't buy now, boy, I'll tell you what, you get late spring, you get summer, you're going to be missing out. Well, that didn't quite happen, did it? Sellers are nervous and buyers are unenthusiastic, according to the Crawford Report. After two years of rapidly rising mortgage rates from a low of 2.65 in January 2021 to rates approaching 8% in late 23, a lock-in effect has occurred. Our current market is characterized by sellers that can't afford to give up their existing low rate and buy something new, and by prospective buyers that simply can't afford to buy. You might say we're stuck in a wee bit of a rut, and it's beginning to look like we're going to be in this rut for a while. I could not agree more. We're used to things changing in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. We're not used to sitting in a situation like this for one to two years. It's highly possible. We could see a rate cut in November. I don't see one coming at all this summer. Uh, but even that rate cut, if it does come, is probably already going to be baked into, uh, you know, the bond market. So, you know, we'll see. But here's some of our real numbers here. And again, go to, I sound like a broken record. Go to my website. You can download this report so you can read the whole thing. But it says here, in a recent National Redfin report, the median monthly mortgage payment was 2829 at a 6.99 mortgage rate, representing an 8.6% year-over-year change. Pending contracts are down 10.9. New listings in May totaled 9,600 representing a 25.5% year-over-year change. We have 25% more listings this year than we did last year. Sales were kind of starting to follow them. We were still running about 75% ratio, um, but that's kind of coming down a little bit right now. Active listings were 7, 17,800, representing a 55% change. So I misspoke there. The first one is new listings are up 25%, but active listings are up 55%. What's the difference? Well, new listings are coming on 25% higher. Sales are lower, so they're staying on the market longer. So the active listing inventory continues to grow. So it says here, though, too, according to Tina Tambor with the Comfort Report, 55% of sales are closing with seller incentives compared to 49% last year. The medium incentive to buyers is nearly... $9,400, up $1,200 from a year ago. Ouch, ouch, ouch. According to public records data, are you sitting down? In terms of resale homes, May of 2024 was the third worst May since we began aggregating sales data in 1999. Sales in May were lower only in 2020, 2008, the outbreak of COVID, and the Great Recession. So what does it mean? Well, um, be besides the obvious, I mean, it means we're just slower than dirt, uh, but it doesn't mean yet that the wheels are falling off the wagon and that, uh, and that things are crashing. I use the crash word. It definitely means slow and we are going to see price reductions, 
uh, coming coming on, not fast and furious, but more and more. Because quite honestly, a lot of the home sellers that are selling, they're putting them on the market. And if they don't sell, they're just letting it expire. Well, I tried. I'll stay with this rate. I read a comment on a Facebook group, a real estate Facebook group, that this particular agent, her client, their listing expired, and they decided to go ahead and pull it off the market. And doggone it, she got 30 phone calls from realtors between 8 and 9 in the morning the very next day. Realtors, knock it off. I get it. Banging the phone three hours a day, calling, calling expireds and canceled is how you make your money. But really, 30 phone calls in an hour, and she works from home. Um, you know, I can't stand pounding the phone. I That's People were coaching me and going, Rick, you need to get on the phone for three hours a day. I'd make like two calls and I go, I don't like making people mad. So you're a fool, Rick. You're not making as much money. Yeah, but you know what? I sleep at night. So <laughs> I'll get off that soapbox. I was very disappointed to read that. And, uh, and you know, agents don't put your seller's name on there. Um, I guess they're going to find the phone number anyway, but I don't know. Bugs me. This one, the Cromford Demand Index, I've always said, watch those numbers right there. The red number is the demand and the blue number is supply. And when they cross, prices change. They crossed here. See that? That was when the freights first went up. This here is what I call the silly season. Look at the demand way up here. Supply way down there. This is now changing. I predict in the next month, whenever they update this page, sometimes they skip a month, that we're going to see demand lower than supply as far as the index goes. If that happens, we're going to see some downward pricing pressure. And this is what Zillow's looking at. This is why they're saying, well, we don't think we're going to finish the year higher than last year. We think we're only going to finish the year minus 1.4%. And they were projecting that we were going to be up this year. Now they've got plenty of time to revise it again, and I'm sure they will. And then you got the Case Schiller index that's going to put out some revisions and Redfin. And the predicting season really starts showing up in December when they start predicting next year. But we've got plenty of time to worry about those PhD guesses that are out there. I wonder how many people they had to have in a room to revise that number. It's interesting to watch. But they're smarter guys than me, so I'm going to let them run with it. Hope everybody enjoys this. Do me a favor. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Rick, rickhelps.com. Don't forget to go download that report. Take care.